So what I have here in front of me is my Metal Aquarius. I haven't opened it up yet. I did the other video showing that I got it, and I really like this little computer. Yeah, if you can tell, because I'm writing software for it. But I also have something else. A well-known member of the Metal Aquarius community sent me this. This is supposed to be a drop-in replacement for the RF module that gives you composite out instead of the bad RF. So we're going to see how that works. Hopefully. I don't break things. So we're going to take it apart. I've never done this one before, so I have no idea how this thing is going to come apart. I do know one thing. This is a pain in the ass. This big old war war attached to it is a pain in the neck. That would probably be the first thing I'd ever want to do is make that so you can unplug it. But there is... I'm, just, I'm feeling to make sure there's no screw down in here. No, okay. This is my first Aquarius, and it's my only Aquarius, only Aquarius right now, so I really don't want to ruin it. It's totally a working module, but the output sucks. At least on the monitors that I have, or the TVs I have. And I want some nice, clean, crisp, clear output so that I can better work on software and code and be able to see what it looks like really nice on the actual hardware I mean instead of having to rely on the emulator so we got those screws up here let's see what this thing does Did it just lift off okay something's lifting off what's lifting off where up oh, okay okay so we have a membrane which sucks I don't like those but we're gonna have to pull that out I'm gonna just roar, gently rock it back, I hope. Yeah, okay, that's out. We did good there. That's out. All right, so we had the old exhausted battery just pop up on me. So I gotta get back into this. I'm noticing something here. What is this? The RF shield is glue or soldered to the cover. I better plug my soldering iron in. Looks like I'm gonna have to be loosening things up. All right, so what's holding it down? One, two. Yeah. Three. Four. Okay, I'm seeing four screws in here. Let's see if that's the only thing that holds them down now. One. It's got a very small RF modulator. Most RF modulators I've seen from that time period are all the same design. What is it? It's not is it Aztec or some com some company name. It starts with an A. Actually, I can tell you. Hang on a second. Yep. I went over and looked at my ColecoVision I have on the floor there in pieces, but it doesn't have a label on it. So let's see what we got here now. We remove that. Does it come up easily? Oh, we got one more there. Okay. So far, we seem to have two different screw types. We have one that has like a built-in washer that comes over here, and then we have little flat ones that come over here. Those three. Where are we at now? Anything else stop me from opening up? Okay. It looks like I have to remove this. I have to remove the power supply plug come on All right there we go that's out okay now what what else is holding you in place I know so there's somebody out there with a Aquarius, and they're like, you're missing it, Millie. It's right there in front of you. And I'm like, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't want to force it. There's nothing back. Or is there? Hang on. Is there anything underneath here? Underneath the feet? No. I'm going to have to reattach that. What about this? I'll just pull these off for now. I'll reattach them all when I get done. Let's just see if there's anything in here. I need to. I need the feet. No. Again, somebody out there with an Aquarius has pulled these apart. It's, it's basically saying, "Damn it! You don't have to take the feet off." 
Just twist and pull. It comes out easily. Read the manual. I don't know where the manual is. I don't have a manual. Okay, that doesn't it. But I got the feet off. Okay. You see, there's something holding me down. Do I have to remove this RF shield first? I, maybe I do. Maybe I have to actually unattach this first to get it to come off. That's a, I won't say bad, but that's a screwed up way of doing things. Thank you very much. Make me have to do this the hard way. Alright, so is my thing hard enough? We'll see. We're not hot enough yet. Nope. Gotta wait a little bit longer. Alright, now it's warm enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply take my glasses if I see better without them. So I'm gonna apply some heat here. And I think if I just apply heat I can just yeah, separate it like that. Then keep it apart for a second. Blow on it to the solder. Cool so it won't reach it. Then I have this one and that one. So this one's next. Uh, let's see. Can I do it from right here? Oh. Trying to find a place where I can get a good lift on it. Make some leverage here. Okay, that worked. Let the solder cool. Alright, then we got one here. Same thing. I probably can come from the front now with this one. Uh, let's go this way. I'm not putting a lot of lifting pressure. I'm just putting a little, just enough to make it let go once the solder is we can uh, melt it enough to release it up. Maybe not that way. Maybe let's try it over here. Go left hand. Not lefty. Okay, that one's off. Okay. Now, from what I can see, I have a wire over here that's also connected to this RF shield. So let's just unhook that. You know those pliers that hang on to the wires, I can just pull it off. Let's see what we got here. Have we disconnected it enough? These don't, I don't think those have to come off, do they? Uh, yeah, I'm believing they have to come off too. Huh? Damn. You guys really want to make it difficult for me to get in here. You know, I, I'm not putting the RF shield back on if I don't have to. Easily, come on. Oh, that didn't even have to come off. Wow, go back on. I'll reattach you. You didn't have to come off, so you stay on. All right, so let's see what's holding us in here. Watch out. What's holding it in place now? Excuse me, but if there's a screw there, Millie. I should probably look down that hole, too. Is there any other holes that I missed? 
No, that appears to be the only one. This has enough screws holding this thing together. God dang. She's, I know everybody's out there like, hey, hey, look, idiot, screw. I know, you're all telling, you're all saying that. And then watch it just lift right out now. Duh. Well, I have to take that RF shield off anyways to get to the motherboard, but yeah, duh. Okay, we got this here. Does this unplug anywhere? Or do I have to? Oh, I gotta unhook it. All right. So that comes off there. So far, it's really built very well, considering how it was supposed to be very cheaply made. I don't see it being cheaply made. I just see it. Right now, this is not a cheaply made computer. I have seen cheaply made computers. And in, in all honesty, I mean, yeah, you, you know you guys ain't going to like this. But in all honesty, this thing so far is built stronger and better than the Commodore 64. It's built stronger and better than the Ataris. It is. It's really built very well. It's built like a freaking tank. It just has a lot of... Missing a lot of features. I almost knocked my thing over because it's wall work in the wire. Knock my thing of screws over. That would have been fun. But yeah, this is built like a friggin' tank. So let's see where we're at now. Now that I got that off, can I? Okay, you're off there. Are you hooked on anywhere else? Oh no, you got some bent ones now. Oh, okay. Not only do we have some ones that are soldered, then we're just going to bend them. Oh, there are more. Jesus. God damn, guys. You really wanted to be sure that you passed all this RF frequency stuff. Yeah, I don't believe my RF, this RF shielding is going back in here. Since this is my own and I take them off anyways. This one's coming off too. Let's see. Do you just twist or do you need to have some soldering iron done afterwards? I don't think this is designed to like it won't work without the RF shielding. That would really suck. You know, if you'd like design it so that the RF shielding is the oh, that's not good. I'm gonna clean that up. The RF shielding is the actual ground plane for the computer. But yeah, this is a bitch. All right. Excuse my French and all, but this thing's a pain in the neck. I'm getting a new profound, I don't know what you call it, appreciation for this thing. Get away. Where's the next one that's holding it in place? Twisted one. Right there. Some of them are twisted, some of them are soldered. Like, the ones that are on the outside edge are soldered, the ones that are on the inside are twisted. So let's keep doing this. I should make sure I update my eBay search in case I need to give me another one. You know, just in case I break this one. You got that one right there. Okay, that's done. Now I want to watch this one that I heated up somewhere. I'll find it again, but yeah, it was actually it was this one here. Just make sure none of these traces. Okay, it didn't. I thought I might have had solder bleed over onto the trace, but it didn't. So I'm good to so. Okay, where am I at here? Okay, you. You are a twisted one. That should be coming out now that I untwisted you. Let me just see what you do. Okay, you come out there. Okay, we're getting there. Ew. Okay, you're twisted. I thought you was like that. I thought that giant solder blob was it. I'm like, ew. Okay. And then let's twist it one right here, and I think we only have one solder blob left after that, and I think it's off. And it's off. Yay! Guess who's not going back on? Maybe. I doubt it though. I don't see a reason for it. But I could put it back on. It's not that hard and it's not ruined. So and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at putting it back on. But here we go. Now we're down to here. 
Then when you get in here, it's kind of interesting. Now, this is fascinating. Was it just them? Is that all they did is made um, specialized chips for Ferranti? Because Ferranti made, also made the graphics chip for the Time, uh, yeah, the Time Machine Claire 1000, the ZX81s. They made those graphics chips, too. So, were they, um, is that all they did for a living is make graphics chips? Specialized graphics chips? Where is my little plastic brush? I just want to get this crusties off of here. Just to make sure there's nothing connecting these traces. No, okay, they're good still. So, all right. All righty, then we got that here. I like to have some here. I have no idea what that's going to do. But now what I need to do is, probably now what I need to do is I need to look at the video on how to do this, the next part. Because, yeah, I got to remove this. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. You know what I mean? But, okay, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to watch some video. All right, so I watched a little bit of the video here, and I know what I'm doing has already been done by somebody else, done by the guy who created the the adapter. But I wanted to just do a video also just to show how it's done. First thing I gotta do is I gotta remove this solder off all of these tabs, which I probably I figured I probably had to, but I wanted to see the video first. So I get my solder sucker out. Let's just see how well we can do here. This is a lot of solder to be sucking on. Is my solder sucker even hot enough yet? It may not even be hot enough to get in there. Nope. She isn't hot enough yet, so let's pause and wait. While it's heating up, I'll just show you what I need to do. How do you remove those four there? Because those are what's holding the RF can in place. I also have to remove these four here because those wires go in there. Those, are, this is, I'm um, then got the right ones in place. But you got a plus 12 volts. You got the channel selector, which is that one. You got video and you got audio, go in there. And the uh, adapter plugs into them and uses them. And then I have to run five volts to it from somewhere. So we're gonna see how that works. Now I do have an issue with this adapter in that it wants one of these old style AV ports, but he does have sound composite and everything else. So I may just run a temporary bodge on that one. We'll see. Because I don't think I have one of those AV cables there. I'd have to get it from eBay. Are we warmed up enough yet? Are we warmed up enough yet? Huh? Are we warmed up enough yet? Are you hot? You're still not hot. Oh, there you go. You're getting there. You're getting there. Okay, let's put you on here and do some more. Slowly taking chunks of this one out. This one having one of those electric ones would be really nice. But I'm getting there. Turning. Almost there. Alright, so let's go to the next one. This one I'm going to have to twist that. So I'm going to come back with the needle nose and try to get that one in a bit. That seems like the biggest one. Or the hardest one to get to. So let's just... Come on, get hot. You're taking forever to warm up there. So this way here, I'm going to have to turn that. I don't think I can turn it yet. No, I can't. Now I can always try the method of heating it up and pulling the can out at the same time. Why don't I do this first? Well, I'm going to get these wires out of the way.
I'm gonna have to add some solder to it. Yeah, that one came out. Woo! Big puff of smoke. That one came out. I guess maybe it's getting harder now. Almost got all these clean. Close. I might have to put some solder on those two there. I should plug the soldering iron back in too while it's heating up. Have them both going. One to remove, one to re put in. All right. Now let's go back to here. Can I get some more of this one out? This one's a beach. Doesn't want to touch that. Wow. I don't believe putting any flux on it's going to make a difference, but where's my flux? Mm -hmm. Where's our flux at? Here it is. I use the flux so rarely I couldn't even find it. So let's just see. Take a Q-tip. I'm just cut the end off here, and use a Q-tip as like a little mini spatula. Really, wire cutters won't even cut through the Q-tip. You're really good, wire cutters. It's paper. It's not plastic or metal. Don't give me shit. It's Monday. So let's just, let's just try this. I seriously doubt this is going to help, but you never know. Why am I putting it on every one? Well, I guess I will. I'm going to just do all, through, all of them. I'm always going to clean it up afterwards. Again, as I've said many times before, I'm not an electrician. I program. I like to do electrical stuff, but I am not an electrician. So let's just see what we got here. Oh, that made a dent in it. ton of solder in this thing. That ain't working. Applying so much heat to things. Come on, damn, this isn't even touching the solder now. Alright, fine. Be difficult. See if I care. Let's go back to the wires, let's get them loosened up. But I'm gonna get that off. Let me just see this. I got those two are out. Am I hot enough yet? Those two are out, but this one just could use a little bit more solder in here. Yeah, it's it's weird that you have to add solder to remove it, but yeah, you have to give it something to purchase. And these over here's got so much solder, they don't need no more added. But these over here. Yay, I just ripped the friggin' trace off. Good one. Way to go. That's what you get for trying to do something. You ruin it. So that was fun. I can fix it, but damn it, that pisses me off. Really does. 
trace just fell right off. That damn piece of I don't know what. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna dig this thing out now. I've already damaged it. Might as well just keep digging. Keep going. Rip that loose. These should come out now. Maybe either way, I'm just gonna cut them loose. Now, I don't believe this is being held in by anything other than just the outside case. There is no solder on the case. It should come off the base. No, it won't. Yeah, this is this has turned out to be a nightmare. I'm going to stop the camera and see what I can do with it. Alright, so I'm back and yeah, I was frustrated about that. So I stopped and I thought about it. I got out my other solder sucker, which is actually just a basically, it's just a simple plunger. And I'm using this because it seems to heat it up better. And it actually is be doing better now. If I heat this up in here, get it to where it's melting, then just bring this over here and do a get quick suck. I'm getting a lot of it out. get it to the point where I think I can just about heat this thing up or pull this thing out. Let's go over here. Let's just see what side I want to get on this side. It looks like this has all the solder still on it. I wonder if I can turn this now. I'm probably blocking your view with my hand and stuff, and I'm sorry. I'm a little frustrated with this one. I'm worried I'm destroying my computer playing with it. Alright, so I turned it that way, the way it should go. Now, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up eat, heating it up and pulling it out while the solder is still soft because I don't think I'm getting it all out. I'm going to get most of it out. Oh. Heat you up. It pulls out a lot of it when I do it like that. The only issue you got is you really can't get in here too close to it. As soon as you pull out, the starter starts to cool. And it gets harder to do. But I'm getting some of it out here. Get out of here with the solder. I got one more here to get the vast majority of out, and then I think I might be able to wiggle it out. And oh, this one's gonna be twisted too. I say, okay, nice of you. Thing I'm not worried about traces over here. This is just attaching it to the big old ground plane it has. All right, now I'm going to see about twisting it like I did the other one when I heat it up. No, not that one. I want this one. I'm not watching the camera, so if you can't see what I'm doing, I do apologize.
<laughs> Try it this way, this hand. All right, got it going the right way. Now let's just see if I can remove a little bit more solder. Now, I'm going to try and work this thing out slowly. I'm going to go from this one first because I can put the, I can put the screwdriver right here as a little wedge tool. See what I did is I tried to remove from this side and I realized that it's actually the outside of the can that goes down to the bottom and not the bottom of it. So, I thought I might get lucky, but no, I'm not lucky. So, I'm going to wedge this one and try to use the screwdriver. This is when I could use a third set of hands. That one's loose. That one's disconnected. It's not hooked in nothing. Okay. So the next one I'm going to try to do is. Can I push it through? Maybe I can push it. Let's see something here. I can push it through to give me some um, space. So, what if I heat it up? If I heat it up, can I then push it down? Got that down some. Okay, let's just try all of them the same way. That seemed to work. By pressing down on the tab with the screwdriver and heating up along the side, it was able to make it go down some. Okay, let's keep trying. That one worked. He's got me down to where I can get my screwdriver in there now. Okay. Let's get this one out all the way now. It's out all the way. Now let's get this one out all the way. That's out all the way. Okay. Let's get this one out all the way. All right. Now we have one more left down here to get out. And it's out. There we go. See, that isn't used for you. It's got flux and stuff on it. That doesn't use or anything, that's just a ground plane. And as for that trace that I messed up, which ticks me off, if I follow it, I mean, you may not be able to see it, but if you follow the missing trace, it just comes over here to that little V right there, so I can just go straight off of that one. So I'm still good. If I even need that one. For all I know, that could just be the frequency channel selector, and I don't care about that one. So, last thing I want to do is I want to get these wires out so they have nice clean holes here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get my solder sucker plugged back in. Well, actually, you know what? I bet I can pull them out with just using the solder gun to heat them up. Let's take them and put it. I'm going to grab one of the wires with my needle nose on this side here. I mean, use my fingers. It would be hot, but maybe I can just use my fingers. Yeah. One. Two. My tip got bent. I'm going to straighten my tip up and clean it. Three. And the fourth one. The one on the bottom. There. I got them all out now. And 
I actually got holes there too. So that's clean. So we're going to clean this board up now. I'm going to clean up my mess. I'll watch some more video to see what I do next. Alright, so I just spent a few moments just cleaning up the... I, guess, I don't know what it was. Was it um, heat transfer goo? Whatever it was that was in between. I cleaned that up there and cleaned up down here. And it's not as bad as I thought it was. I thought I had ruined stuff, but I didn't ruin anything as far as I can tell. I do have to watch this one trace here. It's very close to that one. I don't like that. But I may end up having to lift that trace up. Just, uh, just screw it and lift that right out. This one is just sitting there. Anywho, um, so what I do now is I need to have, I've been watching Sean's video, and I will put a link to his video in the description too. I need five volts for the composite, and he recommends we use that little one right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over, and that's this right here. I'm going to use a solder sucker, and well, I'm going to apply some solder to it first. Use a solder sucker and remove it, or open it up. What I'm going to do before I do any of that is I'm going to make sure I do the right one. So I'm just going to put like a little line there pointing at it, just so I know which one it is, because there's a lot of them down there. So I'm going to, once this, I get warmed up, I'm going to apply a blob of solder to that, suck it out so I have an empty hole, and then I'm going to put a little, something on it. This side here, they'll let me connect a wire over. I can just run a wire to maybe I just solder the wire in. He he had like a little adapter, but I'm just going to send the wire through. We'll see. Let's see which one I want to do. Alright, so now I'm going to apply some solder to this one. And then we're going to clean it all out. All right, so the battery died on that again. This doesn't want to clean out too well. Oh, there we go. We got it that time. Okay, we got a hole there. The guys might got my wire here, and I'm going to unplug you now, because you are always in the way, and I don't want to burn myself or knock it down. Now I'm going to take my wire, I'm going to tin the end that's going in, apply some solder to it, just so that the wires are all connected together and they don't stick out, or, yeah, stick out from each other. So I'm going to just take this, I'm going to run this through the hole there that I want, go to the other side, there's my hole. I'm going to solder it to the V. And then we'll clean it up. Alright, now she's soldered to it pretty nicely. Plastic brush. Always make sure it's that plastic and not the brass one I got. Probably better off if I take that brass one and put it somewhere else. I'm noticing one thing about the the corner is the green mass they put over top of the traces is not very thick. It likes to scrape off real easy. When you fix it up, makes you think you got blobs of solder in places. When you don't. Alright, so we got five bolts there now. Alright, so now what we're going to do now that that's there, we're going to take this, we're going to set this. this all these little things here, these right here stands are just going to go into those little attachments here. They don't do anything but just hold it in place. The only ones you're concerned about is video, sound, and the five volts there. And I'm assuming these may be ground too. So, I line them up there. They all line up pretty good. The only one that I have an issue so far with is this top one right here. I'm not having to use the broken video one, so I'm good with that. This one right here has a little bit of solder in it, so it doesn't want to go through the hole easily at first. There it goes. 
It's a mess. The trace is lifting, as you can or can I tell. The trace is lifting up on me, but I can put it back on top of there. I think. All right, so I was able to put the trace back on, and I'll solder it. Just looking in here, making sure nothing is touching anywhere. Looks like I need to heat that up just a little further to get the rest of the way through. There we go. Now looking in here. I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing on the back of the board is touching down here. And there's nothing touching anywhere, so it's in there really good. And then it looks like I apply solder there, 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 and then these ports here, and then hook up the five volts. So let's do that now. Let's take the solder gun. Let's Soldering gun, but it's not a gun anymore, it's an iron. They used to be soldering guns. Let's just hook that one up right there. Now this one's got the messed up trace, but I think once we apply some solder, everything's gonna look gonna be okay. It's not gonna go anywhere. Then these guys need some solder to hook them up. This what can I use to get this thing to stay up a little higher? There we go. Give me a solder. Get to that side. That side. Some of these just don't have. Assuming if I just bridge it in one place, it's good. All right, so what we got there? We basically got a connection on each one. I can bend these a little bit to make a better connection with the board. Trim them off. Do they stick up too high? Let's see. First off, let's put some more solder on here. Yeah, that one's got a connection. Yeah. See, I don't know which one of these pins may actually be the ground. I'm assuming they are. But you never know. It may be the one that you're like, oh, I can't need to connect that one, and that's the one that needed the ground. So there we go. We got that in there. Everything's hooked up good. Nothing moved. I may have to trim them down a little. I'm not sure. Gonna look at it real quick on the bottom of this case and just see what kind of distance we have or how much spacing we have. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just trim them down with the wire cutters just a little bit, just so I don't ever fear that it's gonna do it. I don't think it's gonna touch it. I don't think it's gonna matter, but I'm gonna trim them down. I'm at least going to trim down these guys. Across the room. They always seem to end up across the room by the 3D printer. They never seem to like go behind the desk or anything. It's always across the room by the 3D printer. Yep, that one too. Probably one of these days is going to end up in my eye. Why my regular wire cutters? Why am I sitting there struggling with those? 
Let's try the regular wire cutters instead of these. are actually nail clippers. They work really good on thin wire. But yeah, my struggle. Yeah, much better. Clip. 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 Okay. So, so far so good. And now this wire is going to attach to the five bolts right there. And I'm going to see if I can wrap it, which I was able to. Let's try to wrap it a little tighter than that. Like so. And then I'm going to apply some solder. And we'll be good. All right, now we got five volts for that. Now, the issue I have is I don't have one of these connectors right now, and I want to desperately test this. So I can just wire one up here. Just give me a regular wire and connect it up there until I order one of these. I have to get them on eBay. The 3.5 millimeter AV ports. They're the type that are used to be used in camcorders, which... I don't have the camcorder no more. No, I used to have a camcorder. I was thinking, do I have that adapter? But no, I don't. I don't have that camcorder. So, I think I'm going to hook up some wires on that. All right, so I just did a real quick thing off camera is that I just wired in, because I have to order a plug for this. So I just wired in a standard composite cable into this red to sound, white to video for right now, just so I could test this. So now I'm going to set up the television and I'm going to put this back together enough so where I can turn it on and see how it works. Alright, so I just partially assembled it just so I could plug it in because it needs the case for the power supply. And I connected it up to my TV, which also has composite in, so I wanted to make sure it worked and... Voila, it works. And I'm going to hit reset. And I got sound too. That's friggin' awesome. Sweet. Alright, so we're back and as you saw it worked great. I just removed the cable off there before putting that thing away there. Fascinating. Look at this solder splash up here from when they created it. That's strange. Now I'm gonna put it back together. I'm leaving the RF shield off because RF shields are for losers. You wanna to listen to AM radio? Well I'm gonna do my best to make sure you don't listen to AM radio. <laughs> I usually always leave the RF shields off not because I'm trying to mess with people that like AM radio it's because hey you still have some juice in you capacitor did you see that spark whoa okay let's, let's not short things out somebody still has some juice in them I'm trying to get this thing in here to where it goes up against that whoa. I mean this thing <laughs> hey, you see that spark? Don't be breaking stuff now, Millie. Don't be breaking stuff. Don't be breaking things. I don't know who had juice. If the capacitor had juice or if the other thing had juice. But damn, it touched this. So I'm assuming it was a capacitor had some juice in it still. Now it's just put this thing back together and try not to electrocute ourselves. Alrighty. In the hole. Yeah, and then where is you? Take this and hold that with that, like so. Try to do this with three hands instead of two. Yeah, I know. By the time I get this, I'm going to drop the nut. Now come on, get in here. I, I know I'm doing this wrong. I know it's probably real simple. Somebody would just like instantly do, you just go over there and fall off. Okay. Now, let's try this. I'm going to take this. Like I said, I'm going to take this. I'm going to use this to put some pressure in the hole. Or on the bolt in the hole so it don't come up. Okay. Now I'm going to take this. And try to get that in front of the nut. Or in front of the screw. So I can turn it and not cross thread it. And there we go. Okay. Okay, now I can put that in. I can tighten that up. There. 
Now, no more sparks. Well, don't be all happy that I fixed the... Well, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to cut that off. As I said, I removed the RF shielding and it's not required. I don't think the FCC is going to come get me. So, and it probably makes it way a little less too. That's some heavy shielding on that thing. That's one of the first things I noticed about this computer. It's very heavy. So we've done that. Now we're going to start putting some screws back in here. Remember the two with the built-in washers went over here. So let's just do those first and get them out of the way. And as I've said many times before, what I do when I put the screws in, I take the screw, I put it in a hole, unscrew it until it clicks, and then screw it in. That way you're lining up with the original thread holes that were there. Now, let's just see. We have one here. One there, no not one there, that's through the outside, one there, this one. I had to order the adapter here, it's eight bucks on Amazon, I'll have it tomorrow so I can plug it in, but I wanted to test it by, as I showed you, by plugging that thing in there. I didn't want to wait and get it and then find out it didn't work. I got two more screws, where'd they go? Do you see any place where these screws go? Oh, wait, here's one. Got that one. But that, that didn't use the... Okay, now I'll just make sure it didn't use the RF shield. Right here. Yeah, make sure it didn't use the RF shield as like a heat sink. But no, it didn't. It just sits there. Okay. Now I got one more hole for one more screw. Where are you at, screw hole? There you are, right back there. You know there's a science to how they do these screws? You ever think about it? You put your most powerful ones over here because this is where you get all your jerking back and forth in the back here where you're plugging things and stuff. But up in front, there's nothing happening. Nothing moves it so you don't have to worry about that. Now, the keyboard. This one is nicely designed in that it has like a little extra piece of plastic there to stop it from breaking or folding over when you push it in. Very nice of them. Probably one penny more. Clive Sinclair. I know you passed away and I'm sorry for that, but dang it. You couldn't spend one penny on that friggin' keyboard membrane for the Timex Sinclair 1000 to make it better. You couldn't do that. Hang on a second, I want to see something here. Yeah, I want to make sure my light is up here. My LED was bent down. I want my LED to be up here so I can actually see it on. Like so, yeah, because it's all pretty and stuff. Okay, we got that. Now I'm going to flip over. Put these screws in. And since there is nothing underneath the rubber feet, I'm not going to use double-sided tape to hold it in place. I'm just going to crazy glue that puppy right down there. Or whatever they call it so that you don't use the right, the copyrighted name, cyanoacetate or whatever. It's crazy glue. When I grew up, it was crazy glue. We had the guy that had this yellow hard hat on and he, they, he had it on they crazy glued him to the girder and he was hanging from it yeah that's how they showed us crazy glue worked they don't do that no more they don't do ads like that the ads they have now are so sublime and they're not just boom in your face this is what it does buy our dish detergent before your hands fall off things like that no now it's like, hey, your life will be better if you buy my dish detergent. Everybody will love you. Alright. Crazy glue, a.k.a. Gorilla Glue. I don't know why it's Gorilla Glue, but it's Gorilla Glue. I'm going to put a little drop there. Just a little, little drop. Come on, get out, get out, get out. There you go. Little drop. Little drop. Have you ever, am I the only one that's ever noticed that Crazy Glue... Doesn't like to, well, maybe crazy glue does, but super glue is stuff you buy at the dollar store. That could be the problem. But the, that stuff doesn't stick things together very well, but sure in the hell can stick your fingers together. You know, like you're sitting there fighting and fighting to get two pieces of plastic together, but if you get it on your fingers, all your fingers are stuck. Yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to let this sit on them and dry. 
and we're good. I've now composite modded this, so now I got a better, or better video output, which is great. Have a great day.